This is an ODST helmet from the Halo video games. With a custom visor, I designed to electronically switch between opaque and transparent. Custom RGB LED backlighting, as well as some awesome light modes and functions. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I built it. Possibly my favorite thing about having a decent sized YouTube channel is the opportunity to reach out and collaborate with some incredible makers. I've been a massive fan of the Halo game since I was a little kid. And I reached out to an incredible Instagram maker called Enforce Props to see if he'd want to take one of his awesome Halo helmets and let me embed some LeMaster Tech controls in Arduino electronics. And so we decided to start with a helmet and we chose two main projects to focus on. It would be awesome to figure out how to do a visor that could switch between transparent and opaque, which frankly, I didn't know how to do, but I was pretty sure there would be some way. And then secondly, some customizable embedded LED backlighting, which I was a little more confident and that was a little more in my wheelhouse. I had some of the basic technology components in mind, but I really had no idea what the final end result would be. And I definitely had no idea how much work it was going to take to get there. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I got to the point where I have a helmet that can change between transparent and opaque and has a full LED grid of backlighting with adjustable colors and mode settings. And also I don't usually say stuff like this near the beginning of the video, but this video and this project were a ton of work. Consider leaving a like on the channel and subscribing to the channel. It'll help me out a ton if you wanna see more big projects like this. Now let me show you more about this project. So he sent me a resin cast of this ODST helmet, which is just so super high quality. It feels awesome. It's fairly lightweight, but it's super sturdy. One of the first things I wanna start by doing is building in a visor that can automatically switch between transparent and opaque. And then I think we're gonna to try to embed some pretty cool adjustable RGB LEDs into the visor zone. And then I'll ship it back to him where he'll finish and paint it. And it should be a pretty awesome end product. Now, you may notice in addition to the ODST helmet here, I've got a Halo EOD helmet here. And I just wanted to show you guys how freaking cool his stuff is. And we're gonna do some videos with this at a later date, but we're gonna focus on the ODST helmet for today. Now, my first thought when I got this helmet and we talked about switching between a see-through visor and a uh, shielded or mirrored visor was basically two separate visors. But then when I wore this and I started looking into the dimensions and the space available inside, I pretty quickly realized anything, even a tiny DC motor to cause one visor to slide down and another to come back up was not going to fit inside these helmets. They're pretty tight to the form factor of your face. So I decided we were gonna have to find a way to switch between transparent and opaque using one piece of material. Now, with the realization that I was gonna need one piece of material that could automatically switch between these two, it led me to a technology called PDLC Smart Film. And in its normal state, it looks just like a normal, flexible, not see-through piece of plastic. But when you apply voltage to it, it becomes completely see-through, almost like magic. And I love this technology, and I pretty much knew as soon as I got a sample of it that I wanted to find a way to incorporate this into this helmet. So actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is take this clear visor that he sent me, and I'm gonna get that tucked up in here. All right, so it took me a minute, but I got the clear visor that uh, Enforce Props sent me uh, already on the helmet, and I think it looks pretty cool. The space, the clearance around your head, is pretty tight. So we're gonna have to make sure that that film gets right up next to it. All right, I got the helmet with the clear visor. I've got the smart film marked with approximately where to try to cut it so that it'll be exactly the right form factor to sit inside there. Only thing I don't know, cause I've never tried it, is can we actually cut this stuff? And will it keep working without messing with the electronics? So we'll see. All right, so I'm obviously pretty pumped that that worked first try. Nothing ever works for me first try. So now the challenging part is gonna be uh, getting it connected in there. And then we'll do some testing uh, and make sure that it actually looks cool. So here's another look at the test setup, a DC power supply fed through a potentiometer and the potentiometer is being used to change 
the voltage flowing through the helmet. I've got the sheet in there behind the helmet and you can clearly see the film is having some like morphing effect, but it's not exactly as prominent as I'd hoped. It's still fairly interesting, but it's not exactly the effect I was going for. So unfortunately, I think I need to pop this visor out here and rethink my strategy, possibly putting the smart film on the outside rather than the inside. I think we're gonna have to take a few steps back to make sure we get this thing right. A little deviation from the original plan. Now the visor just comes straight down in the front because I'm just using the smart film. What I found is there's just really no good way to get that two piece uh, shape in it and use this smart film. It sort of messes with the electronics. I hope this angle works. I'm gonna put the phone inside the helmet and then I'm gonna turn the uh, film on and off a few times. Now what I'm hoping we'll see with a light in the helmet is this transition from opaque to see-through will really become a lot more obvious. All right, I'm actually pretty happy with the uh, performance of the smart film. I think there's still some stuff to tinker with. What it's time to do is embed some LEDs in the helmet. Backlighting will really enhance uh, the smart film effect of the visor as well. But then too, I also am pretty sure that the backlighting when we do some sort of color changing effect will look really cool. Now I want to use these uh, individually addressable NeoPixel LED lights. So uh, they're not very wide and they're super cool because you can control a bunch of lights in series with just one digital output pin from something like an Arduino. So I've got this like hobby kind of like press board cardboard and I'm gonna chop up four little strips and then I'm gonna see if I can put them kind of on the four angles here above and below the face. And we'll see how that looks. All right, so I've got four of these uh, components put together with four NeoPixels each. And I have them labeled with the directions that the uh, communications are gonna flow. So I've got bottom right one, and the idea is to kind of mount it right about here. So it'll shine up at the face area and it can be jumped with the smart film wires coming from the electronics pack, which will be in the back. And then these four will kind of go around the visor in a rectangle, but you'll never notice that it's four separate components because we'll program them to all kind of work in tandem. So uh, we need to solder the wires together. Then once we've got the four soldered together, we will do some programming, make sure that we like the styles of it, and then we'll actually mount it to the visor and we'll do some testing. All right, so with a lot of soldering work, I got these four strips of four LEDs each uh, hooked up in series, and I labeled them top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right with the directionality as well, so we can see the direction they'll go in. And right now I have it just hooked up to kind of like the minimal Arduino project I could have going with just some pulsing and then like a sequence to turn them off just to illustrate kind of the functionality we've got going on here with 16 lights. So the next step, now that we've proven out this works, is actually gonna be mount these in the helmet. And then the cool part is, as long as this is easily accessible outside of the helmet, we'll be able to change how these operate and uh, the sequences and colors and flashing and pulsing and things like that later. And then I have the uh, actual tint changing on the visor. Whoop. I accidentally triggered my smart lights. Okay, I have no explanation for that. Okay, but basically I have these four different quadrants and I think what I'm getting now is possibly some weird interference just because I'm using some really long length of wire. So I'm gonna try to clean up my solder connections and uh, then see if I can get this thing powered off of my battery packs instead of uh, off of the USB here. Okay, so it looks a little bit messy on a breadboard, but I'm gonna have two of these batteries uh, wired in series, so that should provide around 20 volts to this board. I'm going to control the uh, tint on the helmet using that potentiometer, and then hopefully that's uh, an okay amount of power to power this Arduino Nano, which I will then uh, have controlling these NeoPixel LED lights. Um, and then last thing is I've got a push button, which I want to use to change colors and modes on the system. So there's not that much going on, but the breadboard can look a little messy. Here we go. 
Okay, well the lights went nuts for a minute there. Okay, kind of to my dismay, because it's gonna require some rework. Um, as soon as I plug the lights into a much shorter cable, the uh, blinking went away, the flickering went away, and they work um, pretty much perfectly. So my theory of those real long signal cables uh, creating some interference is probably right, which means we gotta think of a little bit of a redesign here. I have swapped for a more high quality push button that I probably should have started with in the first place. And now I'm getting really consistent clicking and control. The final thing I need to do is cut in the uh, final code for color changing and then a second one for switching modes. Uh, so that's a little bit of code, which isn't that exciting. So I will probably leave a link to the code that I end up using. And then I want to zip this thing into the helmet and don't look at the mess I'm working on it. Okay, no smoke is a good sign. The lights are on is a good sign. Now let's mess with the transparency. Oh man, from the side, it is super clear, but here, I mean, that's sweet. I can see the phone now. I can't see anything. Oh yeah. And this is a great time to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay has everything makers and hobbyists need to take their hobby designs and turn them into high quality production level parts. While they specialize in printed circuit boards and printed circuit board assembly, they also have everything you need to turn high quality 3D printed parts and metal CNC prototypes around in no time at all. Like let's say you have a uh, fantasy football league that punishes the lowest score every week and you got tasked with it and you wanna make something cool battery powered using an Arduino that people are going to wear around to let everyone know they suck at fantasy football. Well, PCBWay has everything you need to design an electronic board that embeds NeoPixel LEDs in it, has an Arduino driving it for code, and input leads for a 9 volt DC battery. Every time I've worked with PCBWay, the service has been extremely high quality, pricing is super reasonable, and the turnaround time is great. So be sure to check them out, and thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Okay, I honestly didn't get a lot of good footage today because it was just a lot of packaging the electronics inside the helmet and making sure my head could still fit. So it wasn't that cool while filming, but the end product is so cool. And I'll try to keep the electrical design as simple as I can. I know I want to power the system from batteries so you can be mobile while wearing this. And I know I have to have the Arduino close to the visor because the LEDs can't handle very long runs. And I know I want to have control of the transparency, colors, and modes from some sort of control box. So the basic layout is going to be hide the Arduino inside the helmet, have wires from the helmet to a control box, and then wires from the control box to a battery pack. Since my smart film visor requires about 20 volts DC to actually go transparent, I spec'd out two of these rechargeable 9.6 volt nickel metal hydride batteries, wired in series. And to get power from here to the control box, I just need two wires. Now an Arduino Nano is very likely to overheat or malfunction if we put 20 volts straight into it, so I'm using a DC to DC voltage step down transducer that can take that 20 volts in and output a lower 7 to 9 volts DC. Then I have two push buttons going back to the Arduino, one for color and one for mode, and they're gonna take the 3.3 volt signal from the Arduino, and that's what's going to switch the digital signal on or off. Then I'm going to have a third control point in the box, either a potentiometer or just a push button, that will switch the visor voltage between 20 volts, so fully transparent, and zero volts and fully off. To accomplish this functionality, I need seven wires between the control box and the helmet zone. Now inside the helmet, I have the Arduino Nano itself, which is receiving voltage in from the DC power converter and a ground signal from the batteries, and then two digital ins from the color and mode push buttons. And then the 3.3 volt pin is going back down to the control box to power those buttons. And then the visor is the simplest one. It's just receiving zero volts or 20 volts based on the output of that transparency push button. And then to power those LEDs, we use the Arduino to send five volts, zero volts, and a digital out pin capable of doing pulse width modulation. So the total sum of the circuitry can seem a little bit complicated, but if you look at it as a series of simple components, then it all starts making sense. Okay, this is the helmet not powered up. This is the helmet uh, in its like loaded default state. You have the ability to switch between transparent and opaque, just like that. 
And then I have in colors, so you can do red, green, blue, pink, yellow, white. And you can switch to transparent and opaque. And then I have modes programmed in. So I have bottom, top, pulse, which is probably my favorite. And then I have back and forth bouncing, top and bottom. And then I have a ring, which I don't know if you'd ever use this, but it's kind of fun. And then I have all on. So those are the colors and the modes. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for this video. It was so much fun to make and to build this, but it was also a ton of work. And I am super excited to send this back to Enforce Props and see him finish it up and combine it with his full ODST armor sets. So if you like the video, please consider leaving a like on it. Check out Enforce Props on Instagram. Let him know that you like the collaboration as well. Be sure to subscribe to Lamaster Tech because we have another Halo helmet and a lot more cool upcoming robotics and big build projects that we're gonna be doing and you're not gonna wanna miss it. Thank you so much to Enforce Props. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring the video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for making all of this possible. If you have any questions about what you saw today or ideas for what you wanna see next, let me know about in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time. Thanks, bye.